had a plane and a bus, and in those four hours, I read Azola. <laughs> so I read the entire book. And it, it is called The Masterpiece. It is called The Masterpiece. Was it a masterpiece? I don't know if I would say it's a masterpiece, but I would say it was really, really good. I definitely really liked the Zola um, quite a lot. So it's Emil Zola, the masterpiece, gets a yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, your typical length, about 400 pages, just over. Best Easy book enough. you've read this year? What, sorry? Best book you've read this year? Could be, you know, it's up there, because not that much has stood out so far this year. Hmm. Um... Yeah, would I say it's as good as like some of the really great Dickens or Dumas? Probably not, but yeah, it's something that's really stood out for me this year so far. I really loved it. So we have an artist called Claude, and he's very much a... He's part of a little circle of artists in Paris, and they're all trying to, you know, make their mark and do something, and they're living very cheaply in little studio places and, and, and whatever. And um, he meets a lady... And the lady basically appears in his house by mistake. She says something like, oh, I've uh, my carriage has you know, broken down or something. I, I need refuge for the night. And he lets her take refuge. And he's very much uh, like, I've never seen a woman before. He's very gruff and doesn't know the correct way to, t- to talk to a lady. And it's a lot of that kind of stuff, you know. Um, and she's a bit put off by him. And then, you know, he insists that she sleep and take her clothes off because she's dripping wet. And at first she's like, I should keep my clothes on for modesty. And he's like, I will put this screen up. You can undress and get into bed. I'm not interested in you sexually. I don't know any women. I have not, nothing. <laughs> I have no interest in women, basically. And no, before, it's not like he's gay or anything like that. He's just not interested. He only cares about art. That's, that's what's happening. He, his only interest is art. So... Everything's fine. He gets up, he even attempts to make her some breakfast the next day, and uh, she goes on her merry way. But she comes back a few months later and thanks him for his hospitality. But I missed one very important point, because it sounds very nice so far. She wakes up to find that he's drawing her. (laughs) So her top has come off one shoulder, and I, I believe one breast is exposed, and he's like, there's a perfect pose. So he draws her, and he wants to use that in his masterpiece. And I guess she's kind of like, well, that was a bit creepy, but it's done now, and you took me in for the night and everything, so, like, okay, you've drawn it, I guess. Like, I can't really stop you from using it. I guess this is fine. She doesn't like his style anyway. She it's very. She describes it as very brutal and violent, the way he, he does his painting. And the, the book is so well written, the way it, it describes all the, you know, all the style and everything. Um, and she's later horrified when she sees what he has done with her, like beautiful, fair, soft body, and how like violently he's he's painted it. You know, mm. I don't know if I know what that means. Really, I'm I'm not seeing how it can be violent. I think I can kind of see it with like the brush strokes not necessarily being as coherent as you would expect from like a realist painting maybe something a bit more like uh impressionist style or uh, even like you but we like impressionists we do we do (laughs) but something that's not as like a smooth skin you have like rougher textures to it and there's like a lot more emotion to the types of movements and it's less i don't know how to explain it maybe but well, explain it for a few more seconds while I eat this biscuit. <laughs> okay. Well, as an artist, I can absolutely say that... Um, no, I have no idea how he would do it. Um, I guess, like, when you draw someone who is just in a... Someone, like, you're almost in love with, or you want it to be tender, and mm. those types of brush strokes can come out from that feeling mm. when it's more violent it's going to be almost passionate and sure you sure. don't get the same type of like appreciation maybe for like the human body in this case i don't know i think yeah i think you've hit it because it, it seems to be that he's not that he gets rejected by the academy and everything he's not doing it like in the classical way he's not showing the form properly you know and people complain later that it's not like super accurate or super uh, like of the style that the academy wants, you know, it's it's a bit, it's a bit too avant-garde or something. Um, 
So he does this piece. She comes back to visit a couple times. She gets a job where she's kind of uh, looking after an old lady, but the old lady doesn't let her out very much. So like one afternoon a week, she runs over to see him, and they eventually start courting. He puts the piece in the museum in the in the, the we, 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 one time a year, I guess, where you would go to the to the salon and the academy and, and enter your pieces. He doesn't make it into the main pe- uh, hall, but he gets into the salon de refusé, into the kind of the re- the rejects, but. Some really great pieces have been in there, so that historically would be fine. The problem is, he's in that hall at the very, very, very bottom end, in the very back room, and he's a big crowd standing around laughing at his painting. So he's very upset. And when he looks at it now, he's like, oh, but of course, it's terrible that this man, you know, it looks like he's walking backwards, and like it's just not, nothing looks correct, you know? And the girl comes to comfort him. She's like, came to see how it did. And, you know, don't worry about those people. And his friends comfort him too. Like, we like to... All, all the artists like it. Uh, because they're, they're also avant-garde them. artists. And they're also trying to do that style, you know? Uh, um, but the people who matter don't like it. Who are running the gallery and the general public. And so she comforts him. And I think that might be the first time they make love. So at this point, they're in love and everything's going to be fine. And they kind of... She has a little bit of an art history. I think she used to do like a, you know, little bits of watercolor here and there. Very, she painted fans actually, watercolor on fans, and she tried to do like you know pretty flower scenes or something. You know, she's oh, nice. So she, what she's doing is quite nice and actually able to make some money. He does sell his pieces. He makes a bit of money too, but he's very much more your your typical artist style. But they go away. They live in the country for a while, and it's very idyllic and very nice. But he's almost too happy to be able to paint at that point. And eventually she has to beg him to move back to the decadent city because that's the only place he can actually do any work. And they're not going to have any money if he can't work. And eventually they move back. And he falls out with his friends as time goes on because for various reasons. Some of them just distance themselves. Some of them, you know, he's moved away. He's been gone for a while. Some of that kind of stuff. Some of them get successful and then aren't interested in their friends anymore. And, you know, whatever. Um, So he kind of ends up with really only one friend by the end of it. And they have a little child, and that friend becomes the the god uh, father of the child. So, the mother is a good person, and she really, really supports her husband, even though she doesn't like his work. She comes to like it over time. Um, But she's a terrible mother. She really is... The child is called Jacques. He has zero interest in the child. Mm. She's like, this person is potentially going to take away attention from my husband. I have no interest in this thing running around. And of course, they're too poor to like have any servants or nannies or anything, so the child is just neglected. And it's always like, well, your father's busy painting, and they, they try to make the baby pose sometimes, and he makes the wife pose again. He has other models come in to pose for him. She's never jealous of the other models getting naked or anything like that. Um, but she is jealous of painting. Now, it's a little bit toxic on her part to marry an mm-hmm. artist and, and then, then be annoyed be... that he's obsessed with painting. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Especially when she herself admitted it's the only way they're going to make any money. Um, But he does get really, really obsessed over it. And he's kind of not a good guy. And eventually, she she never poses for him again after that first time. But he can't get good work with any of the other models. And eventually he begs her to pose. But their relationship gets kind of strained and she doesn't feel comfortable doing it anymore. But eventually she does it. She says... We're broken, penniless. It's our only option. It's our only option. I'm going to have to pose for you. And he's so wound up about the pieces. And then he starts being like, you don't look as good as you used to look. How am I supposed to work with this body? You know, you used to have a good body I could paint years ago. And then she feels a sudden gasp when he's working on the canvas. And it's her. And he can't get the damn thing right. And he punches his hand through the canvas. (laughs) And she's like, he's finally killed me. Like, that's how it felt to her. Why does it matter so much to her then to be the object that he's painting? Is it is this the only time that he'll ever pay attention to her? Is when he's painting her? It like, gets that way, but it gets to the point where he then abuses that. And because she's a model that's in the house all the time, he starts just treating her as a 24-7 model and not even as a wife. So at any moment, he's just like, stop in that pose, stand for 20 minutes and I'll draw you. Like, all parts of the day. And it starts to really bother her. And obviously it can be painful to stand, you know, rigid for so long and everything. And he doesn't care about her comfort or anything like that. All he cares about is the painting. And he works for ages and ages and ages on the masterpiece. And it's garbage. He can't submit it. And even his friends, like, I don't know if you should submit this, man. I, just, I think you've made a mistake. And it's like a big picture of her 
But then all the background stuff looks completely different and doesn't fit. And it's like she's just kind of overlaid over this other picture. It doesn't make any sense and nothing looks right about it. It's a mess. Well, these days anything would go in. Yeah. So it might work. But you feel like it's not working. And the relationship gets so strained. So I'm going to go ahead and spoil right to the end of this one because I just I have to, I think. What happens in the end then is the Godfather comes over and says, did you not notice that your child is really cold and sickly? And they're like, oh, that damn kid again, always up to his shenanigans. Like, yeah, he'll get better. He'll be fine. Mm -hmm. And then the guy's like, yeah. So he might be dead. And it's like, oh, my baby is dead. And the first thing he does is pull out his sketchbook and draw the dead baby. And then he's like, well, my other piece is garbage. Submit that to the to the salon. And he calls the piece dead baby. And it's like, this is quite atrocious. I mean, I, I can see in some sense, it's like, well, no, you've got a memento of your dead child. But I don't see it that way because he never cared about the child anyway. No, and his only no. thought now is like, hey, I'll finally sit still for a painting. You know, it's, <laughs> it's really, really gross. Well, I wonder as well, like, I doubt the salons had anything like that before. I, so, potentially, yeah. I'd also be thinking that like, oh, this is different. It's new. It's not just a naked woman. It's a dead baby. Like, yeah. I mean, awful, obviously. You, you've told me most of this before already. But yeah, uh, just the way he treats his wife, the way he treats like his entire family, and nothing's ever good enough for him. Yeah. I think he, we talked a little bit to Carla about this, and she said it's a bit overdone, the whole tortured artist trope, but I don't know where that trope came from. This is an old book, so maybe it wasn't as overdone then. It sounds like it's also fresh in a way, too. Mm. Like, the tortured artist is usually just like, oh, I need to get my ideas out there and express myself. This is, like, just abusive, and yeah, it's tortured, but it's not the main focus, necessarily. Well... But it kind of is. It is. Well. I'll, so I'll add one extra layer, which is where she feels that he's cheating on her, not with any of these women that come in, but with his work. And yeah. she refers to his painting as his mistress. And in a way, she's a little bit toxic because she wants him to give it up. And it's like, well, but this is his thing. But then also, she, you know, he's not good. So it's, it's kind of like, all right, whatever. But she really wants him to stop the painting eventually. And, and there's many like long scenes, very beautifully written where she describes like the anguish that she's feeling and, and the painting and he's going crazy about it. And they, she even says, let's go away again and I'll make you happy. And I think at one point she even gets naked and she's just like, look at this body and she, I'll wrap around you and like, I'll make you happy. And he says, I don't want to be happy. I don't care if it kills me, you and our child. I want a good painting. Like that's it. That's all I care about. And, like, they're they're starving at one point, and, and their house is getting dirty and everything, and it's really bad. And he's just like, I need to keep doing this painting. And the painting's awful anyway, you know? Mm. And he gets obsessed with it, and at the very end, so here's the spoiler, if you don't want a spoiler, skip one minute, but at the very end, she convinces him to leave the painting. And he looks at it, like, you know that you have that moment where he looks at it with fresh eyes, and just like, what the hell have I done for, like, the last year? This is garbage. And he goes and they, they sleep together for the first time in, I don't know, weeks, months, years, who knows. And she thinks, I finally got him back. And he says, no more painting, it's a fool's game. And she says, I finally got my love back. Mm. And she wakes up to find that he's hung himself. And that's really sad. And of course, then, like, there's a little bit at the end where, like, no one goes to his funeral and all that kind of stuff. And all his sketches get destroyed somehow and no one's even seen, none of his work will even be remembered then, you know. Because he did have good work. That do, they weren't his masterpiece on a massive canvas, but he had some nice, good sketches and smaller pieces that he would sell for, you know, 20 francs here and there. Everything's going to be forgotten. Not enough. That 1800s melodrama comes in a little bit too much, where at the very end, they're like, well, his son's dead and he's dead. What happened to the wife? And it's like, oh, yeah, um, his death brought about brain fever, and now she's in an asylum. It's like, was that needed? <laughs> I don't... How did... That happens so often, though, it sounds like. I don't know. Like, Pirandello's wife had stuff like that, where she ended up in an asylum after, like, some sort of fever going crazy. I'm like, I, I know it is possible, but it sounds like women just ended up yeah. with all these problems. Like, I know they must have just, like, not been taken care of, or they were just somewhat fussy or something, but... How I don't does, think it's realistic. I think it's... 
male authors thinking that the woman can't possibly survive mentally without the man or something. Oh, of course, of course. You know. <laughs> but it's just like, I feel like those times, like, oh yeah, uh, she just fainted from seeing like a drop of blood or something. Revive her with brandy. Yeah. <laughs> like, smelling salts. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, come on. This, I know, This I know. doesn't seem realistic, but maybe we just live in a different society yeah. and standards are different. It's weird. It's yeah, like, but very weird. I'm giving this like the super yeah, 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 because although obviously there's got some sad themes in it and, and that kind of stuff, like this is the super melodramatic stuff that I like. And of course, I really, mm. the, the art theme was really interesting to me and the relationship between the husband and wife was really interesting to me. And then you get these horrible, like naturalistic elements where the baby dies and he just paints him down or something. It, it's, it's horrendous, you know? Mm. So I loved that. So this was um, definitely my my favorite book of the last few months, I think, for sure. 